Hey guys, Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show. Today is Friday, July 7th, 2023. Welcome to another eBay video. Today I'm going to be discussing the huge rise in cancellations and returns on eBay. It is unprecedented. Right now, the temperature is 80 degrees. I know some of you guys down south are really sweating with your 100 degree Texas weather. Here's what we got. Another two weeks of nothing but clouds and rain. Okay? I kid you not. This is every day. I was like this about making a video today. But what really, <coughs> excuse me, what really convinced me to do it was the fact that I woke up today to another eBay cancellation and I'm just sick of it. I'm going to show it to you. I got a screenshot here. Wait a minute. Take a look at what I woke up to today. Notice the reason. Found better price. For those of you guys who do not know what's going on, eBay is showing our competition's items to our buyers after our buyer purchases our item and in some cases and in many cases when the buyer is looking at our item that is tantamount to a person who is renting space in a mall let's say a person is renting a store for five thousand dollars a month in the mall customers are going in purchasing they're coming out and the owner of the mall, the landlord, is standing there saying, Stop! You could have had this cheaper elsewhere. Go elsewhere, but first go in there and get your money back. Why is this happening? Why are they doing this? I don't know. I don't think that they're familiar with the term laissez-faire, which is that they should have hands off our businesses. It's one thing to have us adhere to a strict code, meaning ship on time, that's fine. Provide good customer service, that's fine too. But don't tell us how to run our business and what to charge. That's just plain wrong and it's getting worse. Not only is there a rise in cancellations, there's a huge rise in returns. Last week, I showed you screenshots of a buyer returning a $15 hub, and he was going to spend $32 to return that hub. I got another one for you. I am really shocked really shocked at the stupidity of some people. I was planning on doing screenshots, but I think it's going to be quicker if I just run through the whole video right here and ad-lib everything. Unless it starts raining, then we'll have to go inside. But anyway, I recently sold a set of five Cadillac hubs for $55 plus $40 shipping. Now, when you're getting five items for $55, obviously they're not going to be in mint condition. And the listing clearly said that they were scratched, blemished, not in mint condition, etc. Okay? The person gets the item and files for a return, saying they're not good enough to put on her husband's show car. How could anybody, any rational person, think they're getting five Cadillac hubcaps in show quality for $55, especially when the listing clearly says scratched, blemished, etc.? Let's put that aside for the moment, okay? Forget about that. Let's talk about the return itself. This person is claiming the return as a buyer remorse return, so I don't have to pay the shipping back. But with this new eBay guaranteed fitment program, 
I'm not sure if the buyer is paying or if eBay is paying. Keep in mind, the buyer paid $40 shipping to get the items and will have to spend another $40 to return them. That's $80 in shipping to get back $55. Does that sound logical to you? I'm not saying all buyers are logical because they definitely aren't. But those of you guys who are selling an eBay Motors, have you actually gotten any clear, concise answer as to who is paying the return shipping in cases of buyer remorse? Because I haven't. I mean, I just can't see a person spending $80 to get back $55, although it is possible. So comments about that, if you will. Next item. How many of you good sellers were sent an email yesterday by eBay offering you a 50% discount on promoted listings advanced? That's the new pay-per-click promoted listings campaign they have launched recently. I received the invite myself, and because it's 50% off, I'm thinking about of trying it. However, it's only good up to $100 in value. So once you hit that $100, I suggest you bail. But have any of you guys tried it? And have you had any success? And do you have any recommendations or suggestions? If so, please comment them below because I would love to hear them. And I'm sure everybody watching this video would love to hear them. So yeah. Next topic, and I hope you guys appreciate the fact that I'm doing this 100% without notes. I'm ad-libbing everything right off the top of my cranium. I got a good little story for you guys about impatient eBay buyers. I'm sure you guys have all run into them, but lately they seem to be really, really obnoxious and self-entitled. I'm not saying every eBay buyer is that way. No, of course not. It's only a few, but the ones that are, are over the top, and boy, do I have a good story for you. About a week or two ago, a customer sent me a question regarding a trim ring I was selling, and he wanted to know the depth of the trim ring. How deep is it? I thought that was a, you know, a legit question, so I answered him right away, gave him his information, and that was that. I was asking $20, I think, plus shipping. The customer, a few days later, sent me a best offer of $12 plus shipping. $12. Now, the item is a dog item. So I decided to accept his offer of $12. I waited, I guess, till the next day, 24 hours, and he paid after 24 hours. Let me stop for a second. Let me just jump off the story onto a tangent. Two weeks ago, an eBay seller newsletter update, they said that they were still pushing that rollout, that best offers were going to have immediate payment required. Guys, it's not happened. I swear on my life, on my life, all right? In the last two weeks, let's just say I had 30 best offers. I think maybe four of them had the immediate payment feature. But anyway, let's keep that in mind. Let me get back to the story. The guy pays, and I immediately ship the item out the next day, because I'm very prompt about my shipping. Sometimes I even ship same day. And unfortunately, that can do more harm than good on eBay, and I'll touch on that in a second with another story. So. Let's just say, let's say the customer bought the item on June 30th and I shipped it on July the 1st, which is the next day, all right? Do you know on July 2nd, the customer sends me an email? How come the tracking is not showing any updates? 
So I checked the tracking, and unfortunately, I had to ship it with the post office as opposed to UPS. And you know those guys are a little slow in scanning through the system sometimes. It happens, all right? I was a little shocked and disappointed that after 24 hours or less, he wants an update. But anyway, I said to him, listen, buddy, I don't work for the post office. I said, I don't know why they haven't scanned it again. I said, you need to relax. I said, the estimated eBay delivery date is July 6th. There is no reason to get nervous and antsy on July 1st. It's going to get there. Rush deals never work. I said to him, two things. I said, if July 6th comes and you don't get the item, well, then you go right ahead and contact me and I'll look into it for you. No problem. I said, secondly, could you please tell me why you found it necessary to write to me at 3 o'clock in the morning when I'm sound asleep? This is something I'll never understand. And the person was not on the West Coast in California, where there's a three-hour time difference and it would be midnight. This person legit wrote to me at 3 o'clock in the freaking morning. And after that, they wrote back to me and said something like, well, I was pulling an all-nighter and I didn't realize how late it was or something like that. So, all right. I don't know if the guy was out drinking or what he was doing, but anyway, what happened, happened. That was July 2nd. Now, as you know, we've got the big July 4th weekend coming up and, of course, Nothing's going to be shipped on July 4th. What do you think this guy did? He contacted me on July freaking 4th, on the holiday, wanting to know why there were no updates. Now, i got to be honest with you, now I'm angry. He has no right to be contacting me on the 4th of July looking for an update. None whatsoever. I decided to do the wise move and bite my tongue and not answer him on the 4th of July because I don't work on the 4th of July. I decided what I would do is I would wait till the 5th and gamble that the post office would deliver it a day early and oh yeah 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 they did. I checked the tracking on July the 5th and it showed delivered to his house. I said great. So I took a screenshot of the tracking information and I wrote back to him on July 5th and I said, the tracking now clearly shows that the item was delivered to your house on July 5th today, one day earlier than eBay promised. I then wrote, ye of little faith did not listen to me. I don't know why you're in such a rush that you had to contact me on a national holiday, the 4th of July, and complain the tracking has not been uploaded. I said, the post office doesn't work on the holiday. All right? He wrote back to me shortly thereafter and said, remind me not to buy anything from you again. Now, of course, that's a moot point, because I blocked him, all right? There's no need for him to buy anything off me again. That's not happening. He's blocked. But I didn't tell him that, okay? I didn't even respond to him. I said to myself, I wonder what kind of feedback he's going to leave me. I'm sure he's going to leave something, and it's probably not going to be too cool. So he left me positive feedback with the comment, Two words, two words. Snippy attitude. <laughs> now, personally, hey, that doesn't bother me. I could call and I could probably get that feedback removed, but I kind of like it. I kind of think it's cool. I thought about responding to his comment on my, on my 
feedback area, but that would probably be a waste of time because the only people reading it are my buyers, not people associated with him. This is an example where I would love to leave him a true feedback saying and telling people how he contacted me the very next day after I shipped the item, wanting to know why there was no movement in the tracking number, and he contacted me on the 4th of freaking July, a national holiday, again wondering why there was no movement in the tracking. This is something I feel prospective sellers should know about. Of course, if you want to go by the letter of the law, that could be against eBay rules, leaving a reverse positive feedback, but man, it would feel so good to do it. So yeah, those are my crazy stories of the week. Sales this week, I would say, were okay, but not as good as usual, and that's understandable because we had a national holiday. At least most of us did. I would like to hear any comments, questions, concerns you guys have regarding any of the eBay topics I brought up. Or if you have to bring up some of your own, that's good too. Please remember, I'm Crazy New York Driver, and you're not. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you make a lot of eBay sales. You'll see me again in the future with another video. You never know when. Rock on and peace.